Hey guys, welcome to Orc 7, where today I'm counting down my 7 favourite episodes of Smallville. At number 7 is Labyrinth. In this episode, Clark is attacked in his barn, and when he awakes, he finds himself in a mental asylum, where he's supposedly been for the last 5 years. How'd I get here? So, what attacked you? Was it a crypto freak again? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I know. It was a spirit from the Phantom Zone, right, Cal L? How do you know that name? Because you never shut up about it. Everything we've seen on the show so far has apparently just been a figment of his imagination. His superpowers, his Kryptonian heritage, it's all just been made up in his mind. This episode is one of the great alternate reality episodes of the series. Throughout the episode there's this unsettling and eerie vibe that really sets the tone and makes you feel just how Clark would feel, I guess. Names of people and places from Clark's past are scattered throughout the episode, such as Arthur Curry, Oliver Queen, and the Phantom Zone. And you can really start to see how Clark was able to build this fantasy world in the new world in which he's living. In this new world, Martha is with Lionel, Chloe is insane, which ties in nicely to her mother's past, and most shocking of all, Lex is in a wheelchair after losing his legs in a car accident back in the pilot episode. Oh, you claimed you saw my car swerving out of control, so you jumped in front of it to save me with your superpowers. But when I jerked the wheel, my Porsche flipped end over end and wrapped around the guardrail. Is that what happened? If it was up to me, you'd be rotting in jail. But my father insisted you go to that mental hospital instead. Anything you impress Martha Kent with his kindness. This is a trick. It's a trick! Really? Open your eyes, you crazy son of a bitch! This just look like a trick to you! Now watching this episode, we know that none of this is real and that things will be returned to normal by the end of the episode. But you can't help but be intrigued and invested by what's going on as we try and work out why is this happening and how are things are going to return to normal. At number 6 is Exile. In this episode, after Clark has run away from home at the end of Season 2 under the influence of Red Kryptonite, we now find him at the start of Season 3 living the high life in Metropolis as a criminal. Now I love this episode because any Red Kryptonite episode is great, particularly in the earlier seasons. Tom Welling really plays the Red Kryptonite episodes and the Red Kryptonite Clark Kent really well. Clark, Lana is a wreck and your parents are losing the farm. What do I care? I'm never gonna go back anyway. Clark, you are not forced into exile. You ran away from your problems. You are not being noble. You're being a coward. Oh, let's get out. If you tell anyone where I am, I'll go so far away from the troubles that no one will ever find me. I don't even know who you are anymore. Get out! It's not always that often that you get to explore the darker side of Superman and what would happen if Superman used his powers for evil instead of good. And this episode really shows that well. We get to see Clark using his powers to rob a bank and just how unstoppable a force he would be if he took up a life of crime. We see the impact his absence is having on his parents, and the episode ends with one of the probably least expected fight scenes you'll ever see. On top of all this, we also get a really cool Superman reference with that phone booth scene, followed by a really emotional and touching scene between Clark and his mother. Hello? Clark, is that you? At number 5 is Absolute Justice. This episode sees Clark teaming up with members of the Justice Society of America, including Hawkman, Dr. Fate, and Stargirl. Now in its last three seasons, Smallville really took a comic book and superhero heavy approach, which is in stark contrast to its teen drama feel in the earlier seasons. And Absolute Justice was a real peak of that. This episode feels like it's on a much bigger scale to anything that has come before it on Smallville. And remember, this was in the days before the Avengers, before the DCEU, and before stuff like the Arrowverse. So superhero team-ups on a live-action series or movies weren't all that common. 
For me, this was my introduction to the character of Dr. Fate, and it still baffles me why we haven't seen this character again, either in the DCEU or the Arrowverse. Why did you ask me to stay behind? What is it we need to talk about? The hope for tomorrow that your alien friend spoke of. You are that hope. I have seen it. Did you see the future? I see everyone's fate but my own. Sometimes that scares me. But when I see the future of someone such as yourself, I believe in tomorrow again. While we'd had Justice League style team ups in the past on Smallville, nothing had ever been as big as Absolute Justice. At number 4 is Lexmas. Now not only does this episode have just an enjoyable Christmas feel about it, it's also a really interesting look at Smallville's version of Lex Luthor. In this episode, Lex is shot, and while he's unconscious, he dreams about a world where things have gone a little bit better for him. Lex steps away from his family and his fortune, and instead lives a good life with Lana, getting married with her and having kids. <laughs> and this year, try and remember that we're on a budget. What? We have, we have a budget? Lex, it's been seven years since your father cut up your platinum card. I think it's time to embrace the middle class lifestyle. Daddy, daddy, let's go, let's go! Seven years. This episode really sums up why, in my opinion, this version of Lex Luthor is the best we've ever seen outside of the comics. We know he's the villain of the story and we know he's going to be the bad guy, but his intentions are good and he always tries to do the right thing and it seems whichever way he goes, nothing works out for him. I don't think you understand. My wife is dying and I need the hell of jet to save her. I understand you perfectly. You turned your back on me seven years ago, but now you need my help. So now you have no problem banging on my door, begging for favors in the name of family. I'm talking about Lana. I know we've had our differences, but my wife, she's the mother of your grandchildren. How can I have grandchildren? I don't have a son. Smallville presents us with a Lex Luthor who isn't just a one-dimensional villain. He's a character with real depth. There's real emotion behind his backstory, and we really see how, over the course of time, he starts with good intentions, but whether it's his father or other aspects of his life, it slowly wears him down, and that darkness slowly takes over him. At number three is one of the more important episodes of the series, and that is Rosetta. In this episode, Clark gets a cryptic message from scientist Dr. Virgil Swan, who claims to know more about his heritage, where he's from, and who he is. Hello? Hello, Dr. Swan. What are you doing here? Looking for answers, I assume. Hello, Clark. I've been expecting you. Now, not only is this episode so important because it is the first appearance on the show of Christopher Reeve, but it's also a major step forward in the Smallville storyline. This is kal of Krypton. Our infant son, our last hope. Please protect him and deliver him from evil. Having Christopher Reeve play Dr. Virgil Swan is a stroke of genius, as having someone so iconic to the Superman history pass on such important information to the character of Clark Kent is such a nice little touch. At number two is the series finale, where Clark Kent finally becomes Superman. Now, a lot of people weren't happy with this finale, mainly because Tom Welling is never seen in the Superman suit. I'm definitely someone who agrees with that. The only thing that's missing from this episode for me is seeing Tom Welling finally in that Superman suit. But in saying that, I still think it's one of the more exciting episodes of the series. You and I, we will both be great men. Because of each other. We have a destiny together, Clark. Only on different sides. And I'll always be there to stop you. Always. Oh, I'm counting on it.
what we do get to see here is some pretty awesome stuff. And if you'd said in the earlier seasons that we were going to get some of the stuff that we were going to get, like Superman saving Air Force One and saving the world from Apocalypse, then you probably wouldn't have believed that early on. While the last three seasons were definitely more comic book, and so that maybe raised our expectations a lot more, I think what we got, compared from where we came back in the early days, was pretty damn awesome. Tom Welling has obviously since revealed the reason as to why they didn't show him in the Superman suit, and while I can kind of agree that somewhat makes sense, and I guess it can be justified, on the other hand, it's just the one thing that's really missing from that last episode. My number one favourite episode of Smallville is the 100th episode, Reckoning. In this episode, Clark finally reveals his secret to Lana before losing someone extremely close to him, and then he goes back in time and loses someone else again. So, it's a pretty rough day for Clark, fair to say. This, for me, is just the perfect 45 minutes or so of television you could ever have. There's drama, there's emotion, there's twists and turns everywhere you go. Right from the start to the end of the episode, there's something major happening in every scene. By the end of it, you're just left in tears. Every member of the cast brings their A-game in this episode, in particular Tom Welling, Annette O'Toole and John Schneider. And I challenge anyone who has watched this show to not at least feel a bit of a tear in the eye at the end of the episode. Clark, I know you're blaming yourself, but this was not your fault. How can you say that? I went back to save Lana. And now Dad's gone. Do you think you could have chosen between them if you'd had the chance? Clark. A heart beats only so many times in a life. Your father used his more than anyone I know. So that is my top 7 list for my favourite episodes of Smallville. Honestly, this could chop and change at any time depending on what I'm feeling like and what part of the series I'm into at the time. But let me know down in the comments below what are your favourite 7 episodes and what episodes do you like, what episodes don't you like, all that kind of stuff. While you're down there, make sure you like and subscribe and check out some of our other videos as well as check out our second channel which is called Orcs After Dark. Make sure you also hit us up on our social media pages which are on the screen and in the description down below. But until next time, I guess I'll see you guys later.